In today's video, I wanna talk about the importance of the seller being in the frame of mind that when they go to hire a broker, they're working as a team to come up with a value that is defendable and believable so that there's a successful transaction in the future. Stick around and take a listen to this one. Let's go! When the owner of a multifamily asset has decided they'd like to take their asset to market, they typically reach out to a few brokers to perform a BOV or a broker's opinion of value. That owner and or their property manager will provide all the necessary financials for each of those brokers to do their own valuations and come back with a price of what it could go for in the market. The brokers that that owner chose in order to do a BOV are usually the pretty good brokers that are in the marketplace. They've transacted a number of assets assets, they have great experience, and they see a ton of transactions. They underwrite dozens, if not hundreds of transactions over the course of the last year or two. The brokers have an understanding of what the buyers are looking for, their likes and dislikes, what makes them uncomfortable about a property, and the general direction and feel of the marketplace for that kind of asset. If three BOVs come back, they're usually pretty close together in value. If that value has happens to not be as high as you wanted it to be as the owner, what you have to be cognizant of is that you aren't then selling your property to the brokers in order to get a higher value or a more believable value in the broker's head. If you have to have a discussion back and forth many times with all the brokers about why you believe certain assumptions should be better or higher or lower that the broker has made, in order to get your value up, then you may be shooting your own self in the foot. You may be setting yourself up for failure, which will only affect the reputation of your property in the marketplace, particularly if it didn't sell and you later bring it back to market. Let me give you several examples of conversations I've had with some sellers in the past about their assets and my interpretation of the value. I can recall several examples in the past in which out of eight or nine expense categories that exists on an owner's P&L, he is having to explain six of those nine on why those expenses will be less in the future than what the trailing shows. As a broker, I know there are some expense categories that do change for a new buyer moving forward. But if you're having to explain six out of the nine, seven out of the nine, you can see how that's going to be a difficult task to explain to buyers when they're coming into the asset. Another example will be sales comps that owners bring to the attention of the brokers they've gotten BOVs from as assets that are not as good as theirs and therefore their assets should be priced higher. On occasion, that owner may be correct, but what I find most of the time is they've never actually walked the property. They've never been inside the Unix, experienced the amenities, seen the rent rolls, look at the P&Ls of that asset. You see, each asset, if it's just laid out on a spreadsheet with number of units, what it's sold for, dollar a unit, dollar a bed, a gross rent multiple, that's only part of the story. There are many other tangibles that go into the value of the asset that you don't know about until you've walked through it and done a full due diligence on it, like the buyers who bought that comparable that the owner is using as a reference. Many of the brokers who are doing the BOV on that asset have been through that comparable at one time or another. Another example I run across, though rare, is the withholding of information by sellers. For whatever reason, sometimes a seller will withhold certain expense information in order to get a higher valuation from the broker. The problem with that scenario is that even though they may fool the broker because the broker doesn't have an opportunity to do a full-on due diligence like the buyers they're gonna be talking to, when they go to contract with a buyer, most of the buyers in this game are not stupid. They mostly do pretty good due diligence. And when they find or discover that missing expense, it's going
going to hurt the reputation of the broker, even though they're not at fault, but more importantly, it's going to hurt the reputation of the property and the owner themselves, which only makes it more difficult when it doesn't sell and comes back to market later, the marketplace will know, oh yeah, that's that one deal that didn't sold a year ago. Instead, owners can have a super successful sale transaction by simply putting on the buyer's hat and analyzing it from their eyes and working together with the broker to create a storyline that's believable and a pro forma that can be achieved in the future. When I've done my valuation for seller, I always like to get on a Zoom and go through my spreadsheets so that we can review assumptions. There are many times by doing that and sharing my assumptions that I've made an incorrect assumption. Keep in mind, I've never owned the property. So some things get seen by the owner or the property manager on the Zoom and they are able to recognize right away, oh Bo, hey, you probably didn't know this, that shouldn't be in the repairs and maintenance. But owners having the frame of mind that we're working all together as a team to have a P&L and a pro forma that is solid that is real, that is believable, only helps everyone. Remember, as brokers, we are aligned with sellers perfectly. We want to sell these assets for the highest price possible, but we're also cognizant of how unbelievably important reputation is in this business. Brokers want to sell your asset. If we don't sell your asset, the property's reputation gets tainted and the seller gets looked at as someone who overpriced price their asset. The broker the owner ends up choosing to sell that property, you want that broker to be super confident in the opportunity they're presenting to the marketplace. You want them to love the storyline for value adding that asset. When there are doubts in that broker's mind, buyers pick up on that. If the property has been priced correctly, the broker and the seller will know in about 10 days. Okay, so in summary, step one, for owners. Get several BOVs from the brokers who are most competent and that you like and want to be married to for the next 90 to 120 days of that sale transaction's life. Step two, when the BOVs come back, try to get on the horn by phone call or Zoom to discuss the assumptions on the spreadsheet from each broker. This might be a good time to bring on your property manager or your operations person so that they can also look at the assumptions, make any corrections. Step three, let those brokers then go back, make some changes based on those conversations and come back to you with a new valuation if needed. The next step, and this is important, is understanding that the brokers you chose to do this BOV are competent brokers. They can and will sell this asset. So that part can be set aside. Who you're choosing is the one who has the best price that's believable, that together you've created a storyline that you're you're each confident that the marketplace will understand and be attracted to. You don't want to find yourself selling yourself or selling your property to the brokers. If you feel hesitation from a broker who is historically known to want the highest value you possibly can, if they don't believe in your valuation, how are they going to convince a buyer to purchase at that price? What I've found of being in this business for over 20 years is that the more transparent and easy to work with a seller is, the more valuable their assets are. Follow me here. It's just like the exotic automobile industry. Buyers will pay more for a car owned by a seller who is known in the marketplace to care excellently for their cars and to be transparent and trustworthy in their dealings. Those buyers of those automobiles know that they're getting the best and top of the line product from someone who's not going to steer them wrong. The better you can equip your chosen broker to take that asset to the market, it's only going to benefit you in price on that asset and future deals that you sell. I hope this video brought you some value and if it did, please hit the like down below, make sure you subscribe and hit that little notification bell next to it so you're made aware of my videos each week. I'll see you guys in the next one.